Welcome to 7th lecture of course on corrosion, environmental degradation and surface engineering. Topic of this course or this lecture is fracture surface degradation. We already highlighted in uh, lecture 1 that in this we will be covering what is a slow fracture and what is a sudden fracture. Further slow fracture will have a two divisions one is a fatigue other one is a creep. Fatigue further has a two division whether it is because of the mechanical forces or because of the temperature or because of the thermal load. So, these topics will be covered in this lecture and then uh, we will try to cover this complete topics in one hour lecture. Now, start this uh, fracture uh, surface degradation question comes to do we really require to understand the fracture because we are talking only about the surface degradation and fracture is a well established domain there are number of books on this number of mathematical models are available experimental techniques are available do we need to cover in the present course that is on a surface degradation yeah it is important reason being we are just talking about the only surface degradation related to fracture. What is the meaning of that? When the material gets fractured, it will get us two surfaces or minimum two surfaces. What will happen to those surfaces? What kind of deterioration will happen to those surfaces? So, that is a topic that is a uh, related phenomena we need to really concentrate on today's lecture or present lecture. When we say that there is a fractured material, it is going to be subjected to two new surfaces at least two new surfaces and the both the surfaces are coming in open to the environment because of the there is a there will be chances the environment is going to affect those surfaces. There is also possible that there will be some sort of residual stresses or there will be a possibility of external temperatures on higher side. Earlier there was a thermal insulation to the, those surfaces and temperature was not increasing to that limit, but once they, uh, they we get a fresh surface fresh uh, on the fractured surface it may be subjected to this kind of uh, variation. So, that is why we say the newly exposed surface of a fractured material may undergo various changes. So, these various changes we need to really figure out what are those changes and will that affect to the failure analysis because we are trying to detect the failure analysis or we want to conduct the failure analysis. If fractured material surface is getting degraded is getting affected with environment is getting affected with the stresses or maybe say temperature then we will not be able to reach to the root cause failure and it will be unnecessary giving a more uh, reason or maybe say different reason compared to the root cause failure and uh, reason. So, that is why we want we want to cover environmental factor we know very well ultraviolet ray will affect uh, surface or freshly uh, made surface and we also observed often that the freshly uh, sur surface gets yellow color and uh, may be increase in a surface cracking also maybe the initially cracks were not too many and then when it is subjected to UV radiation surface cracks will enhance uh, significantly. So, we can say those cracks were not really because of the fracture, but because of the exposure of UV radiation to those surfaces number of cracks have increased. So, root cause of the failure cannot be detected if we do not account this UV radiation exposure to the surface or we need to really make some environment in a manner that UV radiation exposure should not be there at all. So, another one we have seen the moisture because there is a humidity in environment and because of the moisture which gets absorbed by the fresh material then there is a possibility of the swelling uh, of that material and that will create a more problem to us. So, and again we will not be able to reach to the root cause failure or we will not be analyzing we will not be able to figure out what is the root cause failure. And this is a major reason and then comes to some time we open up surface with the get a surface from a fractured material and we keep it uh, exposure may be say for several hours. Then what will happen there will be some sort of additional surface degradation 
uh, that is what we call a slow fracture surface degradation. There is a possibility of change in a microstructure. If you keep it open for some time and there will be some sort of oxygen or maybe some other environment and microstructure changes will occur or maybe there is a some sort of gas which is a harmful gas and it is getting reacted with a open surface or virgin surface or surface which has come out uh, from a fractured material. In that situation microstructure change will occur. There is also possibility that this material get further weakening effect and, and then the in the open case as I mentioned about the creep quite possible after fracture also the material is still is on the creep path and then we get a different kind of a reason and creep may not be there as a main cause of the failure. Other possibility is the cracks which were already there and then they are following some different path and we get a many many more cracks uh, under slow uh, fracture in the condition. So, this is the important things for us to understand that is why we mentioned the fracture surface deterioration must be understood and characterized for the failure analysis. If you want a right failure analysis we should uh, keep uh, these points into the mind and then we should take appropriate care and sometime we want to really suggest some sort of a maintenance strategy that only can be suggested when we understand the failure in a right manner and if there is a some sort of a surface degradation then we will not be able to reach to the right conclusion. We will not be able to suggest the right maintenance strategy and then what will happen uh, if there is a we, we, we are uh, not really reaching to the right conclusion material durability cannot be enhanced. So, it has a lot of importance sometime we use a word fractography that should be used to figure out what is a really uh, fractured surface and what kind of the, uh, changes have uh, occurred on the fractured surface. So, this will be covered in uh, the present lecture. Let us start with a very very common um, um, figures or what we have as seen as sample or examples. We say mostly fracture uh, which is a start with a technical term a scientific term. In the case of the fracture naturally there will be some sort of a segmentation or separation or fragmentation. It may be the surface itself may be getting the fracture in the number of pieces or solid body may be getting fracture. So, both the possibilities are there may be the surface is getting removed or may be the worn out surface or uh, normal wear surface is happening and then we are getting a new surface on that that is also possible or solid body that is getting fracture and that is what we have been shown a solid body over here. Now, in this solid body we say that if area of reduction is a lesser than 5 percent then it will be named as a brittle fracture. If area of reduction there is a necking process that has been shown here the neck formation if there is a necking process and area of reduction is a more than 5 percent then we can say this kind of failure will be a ductile failure. Then why we are studying this this is a common mechanical engineering related uh, topics and uh, many people have uh, studied this however failure may be the brittle may be the ductile we are interested only in surface and sometime we observe brittle failure as well as ductile failure happening at the same time and maybe the started with the ductile failure and it changing route to the brittle failure and that is uh, there are number of cases like that. So, we will be studying those things. This is a uh, common we say in this case a fracture stress is equivalent to the yield stress. In this case a fracture stress is lesser than the yield stress or uh, possibility and this in the fracture stress is equal to the uh, ultimate tensile strength. So, these are the points now I am just whatever I have mentioned I am trying to summarize is it the brittle material failure or rupture happens uh, without much deformation and that is what has been shown that either the, per, uh, the percentage elongation or per, and the area reduction same thing. And in this case we say that there is no substantial deformation. So, we will not get indication of the brittle failure well in advance. While in case of the ductile material most of the metals are ductile material few polymers are also ductile materials they bend and then show significant plastic deformation and that can be checked either in case of the, the form or change in the shape itself. 
before they really uh, fail and in many times the failure will occur when the stress is a greater than the strain. Now, it depends on the compressive strain, it depends on the tensile strain, the shear strain or ultimate uh, tensile strain. So, that is uh, depends on this different different situation we can uh, give this equation according to that. Another one thing uh, which I mentioned that material defects generally even the same case like in ductile case if I suddenly increase the load quite possible material will not get a time to go ahead with a percentage reduction in area and there is a spontaneous failure. It will appear like a brittle failure, but we need to really figure out is really brittle failure or it is a really ductile failure. So, sometime we say that even ductile failure may happen spontaneously because there is a huge load change. There was a maybe say brake system and suddenly dynamometer has a exercise very high torque and because of the torque has increased by 400 percent or 500 percent system will fail immediately. It will not go with a long plastic deformation and then subsequently fail. So, these are the points which we need to consider as I say the, the high load and high stress can cause a brittle failure as well as ductile failure or a combination on this. So, it depends on the what kind of the history, what kind of uh, stresses or loads are happening on the surface fracture uh, the will change to brittle or to ductile even the many brittle material if I go ahead with a higher temperature they will become a ductile. Even the many ductile material which are in atmospheric temperature ductile if I reduce the temperature they will become a brittle failure or they will cause a brittle fracture. Now, what is the difference as such? We say brittle fracture has a smooth flat uh, fracture surface with a no or no plastic deformation or no significant reduction in a dimension that will be the spontaneous or maybe the, the fracture will be flat smooth surface. It will not have a something like a many many circles or maybe the kind of the plastic deformation or necking formation. So, those things are important to understand and then uh, let us uh, have a some uh, um, different kind of examples and we will just take example that brittle failure or ductile failure even the material is same maybe the process is the same still the behavior changes why. So, what we have covered the fracture uh, it may be the brittle fracture or ductile fa uh, fracture they are generally generating the new surfaces and we will be naming those, those surface as a fractured surface. Now, when there is a new surface or there are two new surface at least two uh, new surfaces it can be many more uh, maybe the parts uh, can be in the complete one component or subsystem may be fractured in number of pieces not only two pieces there is a possibility. Uh, it can be investigated by using the fractography that is what I mentioned earlier fractography is important and then there are a number of books also on the fractography even ASM uh, Sunder all they have they, they, they write some uh, chapters on the fractography. And then now uh, what is the meaning of fractography is something like a study of broken surface or study of fractured surface that can be studied. Now, what are the, the, the two methods which have been adopted or used in a fractography? One is a microscopic mostly, mostly this we observe visually and then there are some sort of rules which we will be discussing in our present lecture based on those rules, based on those guidelines we can detect whether there is a brittle failure, no, no, ductile failure or maybe the high stress failure or the, the high temperature failure or creep failure these things we can really directly uh, predict based on the physical appearance observation and that is what we call as a microscopic uh, fractography. However, in some cases we need to use a some sort of uh, microscope uh, it can be the 1000 x microscope or it can be SCM when we are talking about the 10 million uh, times uh, magnification that will be basically on a uh, metallurgical features we will be discussing this feature also. Now, I have shown the two uh, the, the pieces here what we call a shaft 1 S 1 and this is a shaft 2 and in one case uh, we are showing some sort of uh, ductile failure in other case we are showing a brittle failure and that is what we also have written here that um, uh, the, the, this piece is causing a maximum shear and this is causing a maximum tension under in this case. 
Now, why this kind of a change occurs even the same if I am assuming the cast iron material I'm assuming some sort of a powder form. So, that means in one case I am using casting method of manufacturing in other case I am using powder metallurgy and I can obtain the shafts from a both the process. If I subject uh, to the tensile loading or torsional loading and then we find this both the one in one case will be the ductile failure in other case will be the uh, brittle failure. What will be the difference? How the manufacturing process have been controlled? Is there a new void there? If there is a void naturally that fracture will change quite possible it will change from ductile failure to the brittle failure. Whether it has been centered properly after powder metallurgy process, if it is not centered properly then again the failure will shift from ductile failure to the brittle failure. So, these are the important things as means just believing that uh, metal uh, or uh, one kind of a process is going to give always a ductile failure not necessary. It depends what kind of a composition and what kind of the process and what kind of steps have been adopted there and then that process or what kind of purity was maintained in a um, in the powder form which we have used or maybe the metal which we have used. So, that is why we mentioned in the, the we can say fracture is a complicated it is not so simple to predict. So, we really require a thorough knowledge to predict the failure. It depends on the number of conditions, it depends on the condition of stresses. So, what is the really shape of this surface? Quite possible if a rectangular piece has been converted to the very complex face and maybe it has a some sort of very thin sessions quite possible ductile failure may well turn out to be a brittle failure. And then depends on the loading method what kind of loads we are applying and what is the really connection between one load to other loads that is also going to affect the fracture. What will be the connection between material the presence of the defect that is what we uh, have uh, described in this uh, uh, the way you say the casting and powder metallurgy and then manufacturing process. So, there is a material possibility of defects and then what kind of manufacturing process. So, this combination will give what will be the finally fracture, what kind of fracture will be there, will it be ductile, will it be brittle. And then one more important thing is a microstructure. I can convert ductile fracture to the brittle fracture by changing the microstructure or brittle fracture to the ductile fracture by changing the microstructure. These are the possibilities. So, these are the important thing and last one is that how it is really reacting with the surrounding quite possible a ductile material if subjected to corrosive conditions. In that situation what will happen in corrosive situation? It will change from ductile failure to the brittle failure and there are number of uh, examples in uh, literature which indicates a ductile failure has become a brittle failure in presence of the moisture, in presence of the corrosion, in presence of the rusting. So, we will continue on this topic. And then uh, I am just trying to show uh, as I mentioned that uh, macro uh, the level we can identify what kind of uh, failures are going to occur. That is why we are using the identifying fracture source by observing fracture lines. So, on the new surface which has come out from a fracture and then if we are able to observe the fracture line on those fractured surface we can judge, we can make a some sort of decision or we can predict what kind of failure will occur. So, this is a we are able to see that this kind of uh, V grooves or uh, with the V lines uh, that is what we are saying the fracture lines. Chevron uh, uh, is a, this is what I mentioned that the V shaped the fracture lines. In this case it is basically showing it is a high impact failure and that is high impact maybe is a high velocity or there is a some sort of explosive stresses sudden release of the stress at a high magnitude. So, if that happens then we are able to see this kind of line in a fractured surface and that can predict if we are able to detect this kind of lines then there is a possibility that high velocity impact failure or maybe that there was a sudden increase in a stress level uh, have been obtained and naturally this will kind of failure will be more or less brittle failure maybe when we are using ductile material, but there will be a brittle failure like this. 
Now, there is a possibility of kind of uh, very uh, the, the good uh, with the circular kind of lines and that is what we call a beach mark. This is a very good uh, uh, the example for the more or less fatigue related phenomena. I have observed a number of uh, failures uh, due to fatigue and the beach mark is the first uh, symbol. If there was a beach mark that means it is a fatigue failure. That is what we are seeing is a clamshell uh, mark uh, kind of uh, concentric rig not necessarily exactly concentric, but more or less you can see there is a concentric rigs are coming and then uh, maybe it, well, the ridges can be vertical also, but in this case we are finding the circular kind of uh, ridges in this case. So, that has uh, caused uh, and then the because of the fatigue and then we can say this is a kind of a ductile failure. So, th these kind of uh, lines we give a good indication this is what I am just saying the brutal failure this is a, and the ductile failure and then uh, it is dependent on the load condition in this case impact loading in this case a repetitive cycle loading has come. So, I can really see the lines and can predict that what kind of failure uh, has gone um, I mean this kind of surface has experienced what kind of failure. The another one is a ratchet mark, ratchet mark is something like uh, we are able to see like this. And then uh, this happens kind of asymmetric form uh, and we have also can say this is a like a gear pair and the gear teeth uh, shape which we observe as a on a gears. This is the happen in this situation and it also occurs because of the cyclic loading situation. So, we can again say this may be kind of uh, uh, fatigue loading and maybe it may kind of a, um, a ductile uh, failure. Now, whatever I mentioned I am just trying to summarize in this manner we say fracture lines reveal uh, important detail on uh, which is related to fracture mechanics, crack propagations these are the crack propagations that are like concentric rings these ratchet marks are the crack propagations. And then uh, the how the material is responding to the external forces. So, these are the sufficient to indicate uh, just by observing or visually looking at only we require a knowledge if there is a V shape line is coming what is the meaning of that, if the concentric lines are coming what is the meaning of that, if this kind of the gear uh, and then the uh, teeth form uh, lines are coming what is the meaning of that or what kind of a values uh, this kind of surface has experienced. We will continue uh, on, the, on this we say another uh, microscopic observation uh, microscopic fractography. Uh, we are going to again observe the fracture line. You can see here in the previous case I said that uh, other kind of ridges or circular ridges while here in this case I am showing the vertical ridges and this ridge markings are the, in the kind of uh, elevated ridges which is indicating a fracture. Now, this is important this indicates kind of impurities and if there is impurities the crack has formed in that formation it is not a going hard with a repeated loading as such. There is a possibility of inclusion there is a possibility of micro uh, structural characteristics. So, this often leads to maybe initially started with a ductile fracture, but finally leads to the brittle failure and that is a what the difference between circular or maybe the fatigue loading and then the here what we are mentioning that uh, some sort of impurities in a material uh, it can be inclusive or moids and the voids kind of a thing and then uh, maybe the gas bubbles and that, that will give this kind of failure. Another one uh, which is a very very famous and very known example is something like a shear uh, lip is something uh, happens in a ductile failure. Whenever we see this kind of uh, characteristic 100 percent this is a ductile failure. And this is the shear lips or curved or uh, wavy line that indicate the shear deformation in a material and that has undergone to the ductile fracture or plastic deformation. So, that is naturally if this kind of lines are there what we call the shear lip lines that clearly that is a ductile failure. Now, there is a another kind of uh, failure what is a cleavage marks and you can see here that again the cleavages are there and then there is a possibility then again there is a some sort of impurity and there is a brittle failure happening. So, that is why we are saying cleavage uh, lines are straight and slightly curved slightly curved uh, 100 percent straight, but slightly curved uh, fracture lines 
which are really going hard and then the favored by the crystallographic planes in a brittle material. So, brittle failure, this is a tactile failure, there is a kind of the brittle failure and finally, we say the multiple cracks. It has a many, many cracks. It is difficult to figure out which one has started from a ductile failure. Often, often whenever there are multiple cracks, failure must have started with a some sort of ductile failure and has it has a led to the brittle failure. Maybe the kind of the loading has changed, uh, there is a some uh, and then there was a kind of a normal failure on the path and suddenly it become a more misaligned condition, variation in a temperature, suddenly temperature has gone very high, no enough thermal conductivity or pump is stopped, lubricant is stopped something like that, then we can get this kind of failures. So, this indicates that something was a more uh, severely, then there was severe problems in a system. So, it is not only the one component, but we need to look at the many, many components simultaneously. Now, this is what I have mentioned the fractography and uh, we covered a macro uh, level uh, fractography in our previous two slides, but we want also to cover a micro level. In micro level, we need to think about a composition, we need to think about a crystal structure and process history also, whether the process history, what is the manufacturing history was right or wrong, always something went wrong or different manner. So, they say it will uh, whichever the process, it will affect a uh, brittle failure or uh, the ductile failure. Again and again I am mentioning ductile failure, brittle failure, it will change from different different conditions, the load conditions, temperature conditions kind of the intensity, how fast we are really applying a load, kind of impact load. So, it will change even uh, in uh, the ductile failure immediately will shift to the brittle failure. Brittle failure and suddenly the thermal softening happens, quite possible brittle failure will move the ductile failure. So, understanding each case is important and then finally, we can take a judgment. It is very clear that we need to have a understanding and anywhere when we want to make any decision, we require a lot of knowledge to judge it. If we do not have a knowledge and then we need to conclude something, then we need to talk to experts who have been doing this kind of work. We need to adopt the practical approaches and then come up with the right results. So, what we are mentioning here in this case also I have a shown under the low temperature condition even ductile failure or ductile uh, material will undergo the brittle failures because the microstructure will change in the situation and the change in the microstructure will be uh, in the, the causing it to brittle failure. There is another point coming at the creep deformation and that what is the creep deformation? We say it is a time dependent even on the same load and the same load the failure will continue increase. We are not changing the load condition, we are not changing uh, as such any other condition, but behavior of the material is a manner that it will continuously increase the strain rate or it can continuously increase the plastic deformation. And we say that is characterized by continuous expansion or stretching of material subjected to constant stress or load. In this case, uh, this figure indicates a creep failure. This case, even though we know very well that um, and the, the gear teeth and often the gear teeth will be subjected to fatigue to pitting, uh, pitting and then it should be a more like a ductile failure. But this case has been shown as a big crack, this is more like a banding uh, failure and this in my view is a, is, a, is a brittle failure. So, what we mention here the deep crack in a gear tooth leading to the brittle fracture. So, this is a brittle failure and uh, it is started reason being maybe say then the earlier material was subjected to some stress as well and suddenly because of the some case and the reasons the stress has gone more than 5 times x1 then naturally the failure will occur. So, initially which was happening like a kind of a fatigue loading or fatigue failure suddenly it has gone to the bending failure and there is a suddenly increase in the load condition. So, again the deep crack in a gear leading to the brittle failure. As such, fatigue is a slow paced uh, crack formation and development process, mostly occurring at the lower loading and unloading of the 
uh, and the, uh, the loads and uh, unloading and unloading happens. It goes maybe number of thousand cycle, ten thousand cycle, one million cycles, many more than that also. So it will cause only the micro cracks to form. Now, quite possible there were some micro cracks formed because of the fatigue, and quite possible maybe there was a some sort of a initial fatigue, and then there was a some sort of inclusion, some sort of discontinuity, or there was a some sort of a void that has merged with a micro crack. And because of that expansion now that is whatever the remaining area you see that this failure has happened because of the fatigue there was inclusion here and then now this area remaining area the was not sufficient to sustain a load that stress level has gone very high immediately and that is why quite possible it will go in a much lesser time and will completely chop off this complete gear tooth. So, this occurs and then this is what we are mentioning initially there was a micro crack quite possible there may be has a another uh, we uh, in this uh, gear tooth has a observed some sort of void and then uh, it has caused a failure. Coming to the this uh, figure which is related to creep we see there is a some sort of a crack initially and uh, even the same load but because the material is subjected to the creep which often which often occurs at the higher temperature. And temperature, but many we can say it occurs around the 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 time of the melting temperature. If the T uh, melting uh, of the one component and the temperature has gone to this level, this may and the crack may expand or extend because of the creep. So, creep is a result of atoms and molecular diffusion. So, when we require the thermal and we require energy, uh, we need to provide energy to the atoms and molecules which happens mostly on the higher temperature. Now, this higher temperature may occur occurred because of the high friction or maybe the less of the lubricant at that point or maybe lesser the cooling water or maybe the cooling agent. So, quite possible the temperature increase at that time and then cause a failure. So, this is a uh, uh, mentioned that uh, atom and molecule will uh, getting a uh, diffuse from one surface to other surface it will cause the uh, material to gradually degrade deform and then finally the fracture occurs. So, in a fracturography this is a macroscopic and then here this is a microscopic this is a what indication that the fatigue has a uh, lead to the finally the bending failure. Uh, while in this case a uh, microscopic initially small crack and then maybe the temperature has increased or maybe the uh, earlier temperature was there initially the failure took a little longer time a first crack formation took a longer time and slowly it moved to the march to the complete failure. So, these are the some sort of a failures when we need to observe and uh, we say the freshly uh, made surfaces or uh, after fracture whatever the surface comes out we need to really examine those surface and need to figure out what kind of failure was there or maybe what was the root cause of the failure. Sometime we use uh, uh, the, the this uh, granular or transgranular um, the, the lines or the crack lines. We say in this case that there are three, you know, three lines have been shown and one case crack is maybe initiated initially, but is following the complete path of the grain boundaries. So, it is a intragranular failure for crack is start from the some sort of a grain boundary and moves across expand across all the grains are maybe boundary related to the grain, uh, the grain boundaries and it really follows. So, if the failure happens in this manner it will be caused as a intragranular. Then comes to the trans uh, the granular may be across the grains and again we have a two forms one is a whether the it was a crystalline or non crystalline. A non crystalline it will not follow any route as such it will go through the, um, the, 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 the different grains it will not also follow the crystalline line. However, uh, in the case of the crystalline uh, failure, it will really go through the crystalline planes and it will follow a systematic uh, procedure. So, this crack also uh, in the causes a failure, this crack also causes a failure and in this case uh, in all three cases so we have observed in a brittle material failures, these are all three cases in some cases that uh, we get also in a ductile failure. But this kind of failures are more common in the brittle failure 
because the grain boundaries are weaker in case of the brittle materials. So, we need to see if the grain boundaries are weaker, it will go through the intergranular uh, failure and then even um, and the materials which having uh, some sort of uh, grain boundaries and but uh, there is a crack which is expanding and then maybe the crack is started like in this case also the crack is started here, but there was some sort of inclusions here. So, it can uh, change or maybe the, there was an inclusion here. So, it can change a path. So, it will not go through the grain boundaries, it will uh, go through the uh, transgranular cases, it can be a non-crystalline, it can be crystalline also. So, that is a, uh, it has been mentioned in over here, it is same thing has been written uh, in this form, we say the pro, uh, polycrystalline material fracture or classifies, uh, classified based on the direction they take or they go through the microstructure. So, it is a microstructure observation. We divide it in a two forms, one we say the Ig, other one is the Tg. Ig is stand for the intergranular fracture, Tg stand for the transgranular uh, fracture and the trans means it will be penetrating to the, uh, to the uh, granules, while intergranular it will be only across the maybe that will be moving on the boundaries itself it will not go inside the grain, inside the grain while in a trans granular it will go inside the grain. In a crystalline it will follow the crystalline plane while a non crystalline it will not follow the crystalline plane. This is what mentioned uh, in I case of the Ig crack propagates along the grain boundaries material having a weak grain boundaries which is a most of the cases the most of the time the case of the brittle material they will be subjected to the failure. Now, even the ductile material which are subjected to corrosion or some sort of embrittlement, they will have a this kind of failure also. So, this is a what the we can think about even the ductile material can go through the intergranular failure or Ig failure because of the some sort of corrosion or because of the some sort of weakness coming into the material. Coming to the Tg, we say that in the crack propagation is generally um, through the cracks and again and there are two types of uh, this uh, this kind of failures crystalline uh, uh, Tg failure in the case of crack will propagate along the well defined crystalline planes which will be inside the grain and then fracture follows a crystal structure and the crystallographic planes in a highly crystalline material. Fracture surfaces show cleavage which we have uh, observed in uh, one of the previous slide, there, there will be cleavage and then it would be mentioned that this generally failure happens into the brittle material. Coming to the second case of the Tg, which is the non-crystalline trans uh, granular fracture, it will not follow as such any rules, it will go through the grains and it will not also follow the crystalline planes. So, very uh, abrupt failure will occur make up because of the number of uh, uh, we say the either impurities, some sort of voids or some sort of inclusion foreign metals, some materials which are embedded in the microstructure. So, this is a um, kind of a, um, analysis which we uh, go through and we find out the good results. I am just trying to cover in a two slide uh, okay, few brittle fractures. In the, the brittle fracture in my last slide I mentioned the cleavage uh, fraction, here it has been shown also the grains, the grain uh, planes and then uh, in this case the uh, impact fracture because of the sudden load has gone uh, very high and the big crater has been shown over here, uh, this is a one uh, these are the brittle failures both uh, whether the cleavage uh, based or impact fracture based. Now, coming to the granular based. Uh, uh, in this case intergranular with the passing through the all the grain boundaries, while in this case these are the uh, transgranular site, it is not really passing the grain boundary as such. It will be going through the grains, the passing through the grains and more or less all this kind of failures are uh, brittle failures. Coming to the ductile failure, we have seen well known examples something like that neck formation and we use a word cup and cone shape. This is a failure. Now, shear lip is another mention, uh, mention that is a kind of uh, failure which we see in a ductile failure. While uh, here we are showing that there is a void, not a this kind of necking formation, 
but there is a some sort of a crack formation or that there was a the void which is really creating or initiating the cracks and slowly the growth occurs. And this microstructure shows very clearly the uh, number of the voids in the microstructure itself which are causing the failure or which will be enhanced to the bigger crack and finally the fertic failure. Now this slide shows the combined. In this case we are able to see the cleavage refracture, we are able to see the micro voids and then we are also able to see the intragranular crack formation. So, this is the intragranular crack formation we are able to see here this is the cleavage fracture and there is a void and this is happening when the load pattern changes, temperature pattern changes or because of the corrosion environment surface some of the crack was exposed to the environment and then suddenly the increase of the water happens through the surface and goes on the or enhance the failure rates inside the material itself. So, what we can say the fracture is initiated by micro voids. So, it in this case particularly the failure started only in a ductile manner there were micro voids and then is expanded or because of the uh, there was some other inclusions then it can go through the intergranular failure also. And then uh, there is a possibility that there are some sort of a uh, structural discontinuity. Sometime we design uh, in, a, in a manner that we want to show very good ethical features in this, but sometime that gives us some sort of uh, discontinuity and that cause a failure also. So, if we want to really keep a very good feature uh, showcase good feature quite possible we need to keep the stress level slightly lower than the tensile strength or maybe the failure strength. This is uh, where uh, we uh, otherwise what will happen micro voids will be initiated and then uh, there will be some sort of discontinuity and then failure may occur much faster pace. So, there are suppose a life uh, which we were assuming may be say 10,000 hours it may fail in uh, may be say lesser than 2000 hours also. Now, with increase in the load plastic deformation this micro voids will be elongated continuously and then remaining area uh, will not be sufficient to sustain the load. So, that is why I say in areas of stress concentration cleavage will occur or cleavage fracture will occur and it will start a failure of the surface. So, we have covered ductile failure, we have covered uh, fractography and we have covered that the combination of ductile and brittle failures. Now, there is a need to worry when the surface has come out maybe the, when the surface of the material has a fracture and then we are able to see the new surface. This is a what we are showing the original fractured surface it does not uh, it is exposed to the environment and uh, in this environment we are able to see the immediately some sort of chloride formation happens on the surface that does not take much time. And then this surface was exposed to the very very uh, we say the very very mild uh, SCL environment and then uh, SCL percentage was only 0 0.025 percent which is uh, negligible insufficient for the failure. But this we have seen the chloride formation happening on the surface naturally if I had to analyze uh, this uh, surface I will finally lead to the some conclusion. While in this case if I analyze the surface I will conclude something else. I will find out oh, maybe there was a there is a chloride formation maybe inside the surface the chloride has increased inside and that has caused a failure, but which is was a not right case right. After the, you know, the fracture of the surface or fracture of the material surface got exposure to the uh, this SCL or maybe say aqueous SCL and that is why that it has changed to this form. So, we need to really worry about uh, on the, the first of the fracture and then after fracture what surface comes out and then whether the surface is handled properly or not. Because to get a microstructure to go ahead with the SCM, TM or some other analysis we require equipment and then we need to take pieces to that lab. It will take maybe say 10 hours, 15 hours or maybe sometime we get a slot after 7 days or so. So, we need to take care appropriately. So, what should we do and what should we not do? So, I am just going to show only that do not do aspects try to avoid 
what is the what are the things to, uh, to be avoided we should not rejoin the fracture surfaces many times uh, we are trying to get the pieces and we try to connect with each other it will also cause a failure maybe additional failure it will change the root cause failure also so we should not do this we should not mark crack surface also often the way i am writing on this uh, 1 2 3 4 something like that we should not do in a uh, real uh, example or uh, the surfaces which we get from a fracture you should not remove any piece also even very tiny tiny pieces sometime we try start uh, removing tiny pieces we should not remove that because that then it will be giving some sort of a root cause failure and by removing we, we are missing those things and then uh, uh, we should not use any harsh equipment sharp edges on the broken surface sometime to clear something we use a sharp edges we should not do that those we should not uh, uh, touch with the naked uh, surfaces or uh, naked hand surfaces something like even if fingers we have a moisture we have um, and, uh, some sort of particles if we touch with the hand then it will also cause a some sort of uh, uh, failure or additional failure or it will change uh, maybe say some sign of the real failure we should not clean it with acid or any corrosive edge so i am i am mentioning all the don't do do not do rejoining, do not do marking, do not do uh, do not remove any piece, do not use uh, harsh equipment, do not touch crack surface, do not clean uh, the surface with acid or corrosion, do not utilize fabric, fiber or mud paper because they these uh, things will leave some sort of strain or maybe some sort of uh, along with uh, the sample or with uh, the fractured surface which will lead to conclude something else we should not do that and finally we should not mask also we should not apply some sort of glue so that no and the pieces remain intact that will give a uh, you know, the somewhat different result so if you want true if you want true failure analysis don't do this that's a more important now sometime uh, we try to do a modeling i'm not going to cover the modeling i'm just trying to show only in one um, a slide and that uh, people have and then if you have interest you can go through we say often fracture models on the, the two model of fracture people think in a, the three stage failures when you say the nucleation we have already covered in a somewhat the detail when we are thinking about the fatigue failure then the propagation even in a case of the, the, the brittle failure propagation will be there but maybe at the much faster pace and finally the failure so three stages we consider initially there is no crack then uh, maybe um, the, the, the nucleation is straight something has started and a propagation is straight it has a multiplied in number of cracks number of crack having increased finally either the neck formation is in mentioned here or maybe the complete failure so this uh, these are the three stages which uh, uh, have been covered or maybe there are complete books also uh, many mathematical formulas are also available and there, but this is only for information uh, one slide on uh, this kind of information but so the crack nucleation often there is a some sort of void as i mentioned earlier it void may have a have occurred because of the some sort of manufacturing defect also or maybe because of the high stress uh, or maybe some sort of inclusion in the, the many times uh, what we develop a product it does not have 100 uh, percent the purity there will be some sort of inclusions or maybe some sort of other imp uh, imperfection in making a microstructure or when we are doing a hardening process on the surface some sort of uh, imperfection remains there and if this is the word there are voids there are some inclusions or there are microstructure imperfections it will trigger the process of the crack nucleation. So, if these are the things maybe in some cases after the, the crack was supposed to initiate after 10,000 cycles and because of the this white formation inclusions or microstructure imperfection may start after 10 number of cycles so naturally the life has come down significantly so the, the once the crack is started we say that quite possible stress concentration at the defective regions quite possible that it will surpass the material strength what is the meaning of that when the crack is formed and then 
there will be some sort of a critical uh, zones where the stress concentration will be there. Uh, maybe multiplication factor may be 1.5, 2, 2.5 depends on the size, depends on the, uh, the, the how near that defect of when the crack is near the load or maximum load. It will increase and uh, that will cause uh, expansion of the micro crack or maybe the reasonable size because when many times we say the micro crack also lesser than this nanometer will not be counted, this kind of discontinuity will not be counted and then this is a maybe say it has a some dimension measurable dimension detectable dimension if it has reached then the we will say this is a kind of the micro crack and that what I was mentioning about the void inclusion and micro and the structural imperfection which was a lesser than this micro cracks and then because of the stress concentration near void inclusion or microstructure imperfection it has increased the size and it has reached to the measurable micro crack or the micro crack which can have a some significance from a failure point of view from fracture point of view. Now next is the crack propagation we may say that load will be there and then once a micro crack uh, is generated naturally it will continuously progress and that has been shown here the crack will propagate or uh, increase in its size and uh, stress concentration and near crack will always be there quite possible it may increase also and finally the area which is really preventing the failure is continuously going to decrease. They say the fracture proceeds slowly or jumps across. So, if load conditions are not changing significantly fracture will proceed in slowly in slow manner, but suddenly the load condition have changed temperature condition have changed or uh, maybe some other atmospheric or maybe outside uh, the load condition have changed as I in one case I mentioned that maybe the water gets ingressed or uh, some asset formation uh, was there and gets ingressed into the, uh, the piece. Then there is a possibility of the jumping or maybe the increasing uh, crack propagation of the significant level. So, depending on the characteristics and uh, circum uh, stress circumstances crack will extend and uh, maybe the uh, slowly in most of the situation, but in some cases there will be spontaneous. And so, in the if it is a spontaneous it is going through the in the brittle failure if it is slow then we can say it is a kind of a ductile failure. And the last one is a failure as a, this is a mention over here materials break when the crack reaches to a certain length. Now, this is a very critical to understand what is a certain length. Here we say that material remaining cross section or cross sectional area is not sufficient to support the applied load. So, this is important it will vary from a design point design to design from material to material or vary from uh, shape to shape also. So, it will not be the same. So, this is important to be considered and what we say the material loses is load carrying capacity load bearing capacity and it may be the suddenly or gradually again depends on the brittle failure or uh, uh, ductile failure and causing the fractured parts to separate on reduce a uh, load carrying capacity significantly. So, this is a what uh, can be modeled there are number of mathematical models available we can also generate a some sort of empirical rules, but we are just providing some sort of understanding in the present lecture. Now, some common examples are there and I am just trying to highlight we say that is a the, the uh, in this case particularly we have shown some sort of uh, failure of the complete uh, uh, tooth on uh, the gear tooth has been fractured not visible it will has cause will be naturally the this kind of fracture the uh, teeth or tooth will cause a additional failure to other components, but in this case it has been um, the, the mood. So, we can say sudden or abrupt failure because a big um, the, uh, gear tooth removal is a big failure it is a sudden failure is a abrupt failure. Now, it may have started from a ductile, but it has moved to the brittle failure being subjected to very heavy load and then uh, material which, uh, which was supposed to be you know, uh, failing uh, plastically or uh, failing almost uh, and then the, it has failed or maybe the in the drastically and uh, with a some sort of uh, lesser deformation lesser indication 
or maybe we were not maintaining, there was no maintenance strategy at all. Failure happened, even if it, there was a supposed to be a uh, kind of a plastic deformation, substantial, then a jamming action will occur, we will not be losing the gear tooth. So, in this case, it is a basically a brittle failure, maybe started with a ductile failure and then suddenly load has changed significantly and it has got a brittle failure. Now, there, there is a what we are showing a botic failure is a kind of a gradual failure is a ductile failure, but we are seeing in this case is a uh, fatic uh, crack is a delayed process slow process caused by exposure of the variable loading it generally occurs as the lesser loads. But generally we say that fatic load uh, is experiencing reversible load, but much lesser than ultimate uh, and the tensile uh, equivalent load or tensile strength equivalent load and then uh, sometime it, there is a possibility it will suddenly go to the failure if conditions are not under control right. So, these are the points we say that uh, this is the brittle failure, this is a slow process a ductile failure, but it can lead to the brittle failure and then uh, in ductile failure another good point is that maybe the pit has started from here, it will be finding this, then another pit, then another pit, then another pit, then another pit. So, it is a gradual, it takes a long time and then we will know that there is a some amount of vibration is coming, very high vibration is stop it and then change the gear. So, as such fatigue failure is uh, under, the, under control, we know there are good theories. However, if it has gone beyond the number of pits, the vibration level will increase and we will say even though it has not cracked, it has not fractured, but it has not lost its utility, we should replace it. So, I am just trying to show here in this case uh, it has not failed, it has not fractured not a fail, is a, not a, not a fracture, but quite possible it has impaired the surface in a manner that we need to uh, change or replace uh, this gear there. Last one is a creep which is also a slow process is not a fast process is a time dependent uh, deformation and we say that it referring to the continual expansion a stretching of the crack if there is a there. So, this is what we are able to see here and the, the bar which is subjected to load it has expanded by the some dimension and this x will continuously increase actually it will continuously increase there is a possibility of the neck formation and then finally the failure. It has also occurs uh, because of the temperature and the temperature we are mentioning something like a 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 uh, melting point of the material. So, melting point in this case suppose is 1000 degree. So, the what we are saying the process if it is subjected to 300 degree or plus then the creep may have possibility is there. So, if temperature is going to this level we need to say yeah there is a possibility of the creep failure and we need to keep in mind. In other words when we are talking about the fractured surface, the surface are going to be sustaining this kind of temperature after exposure to the environment, there is a possibility the creep will occur kind of a crack which are there, it will start expanding, it will getting increase in a size. So, we need to keep that in the mind and how the creep occurs, it is a basically diffusion of the atom and molecules. We were talking about in earlier lecture the diffusion mechanism happening at the higher temperature there is the same thing, but in that case we were talking about the diffusion uh, between two atoms on the between two materials, while in this case it in the diffusion happens from one cross section to other cross section from one plane to the other plane in the same material, it is not a changing as such. So, when the, the planes so some planes are getting weaker and weaker and then uh, that is what the expansion happens and that is what the stretching of the material happens and that causes the finally the failure. So, these are the three I think is a sudden failure and then the two are the slow process and uh, temperature has been uh, uh, also mentioned to some extent in this. It really shows that fracture is important and the surface degradation of the fractured surface is important to consider from a various point of view. Just to conclude this lecture, I will just cover one small case study. I have picked up the, this example from this literature and uh, this paper was is, has been published in 2023 and just I am trying to show uh, the, and the how the temperature really plays a significant role into the uh, changing the failure as such. 
just but before uh, reaching to that point, let me explain what, uh, what kind of case study we are going to cover. You see in this case, we are thinking about the fracture of a braced diamond abrasive grinding wheel. So, there was a, the, the, some sort of uh, uh, grinding wheel which uh, was prepared by one company and of course, it was uh, prepared by uh, the manufactured by the brazing action that is why the, we are using word. And then uh, this kind of uh, nickel chromium uh, uh, PSI uh, active powder what we use using the word alloy powder was used as a interface between the uh, diamond uh, which was the synthetic diamond or uh, artificial diamond and the kind of steel substrate to bind the surface. The question comes how do we analyze this kind of wheel naturally to analyze any kind of process or uh, what we say uh, the, the failure we need to study complete process. So, that is why we are mentioning here the filler alloy the nickel chromium phosphorus uh, silica uh, active powder as I mentioned that is a filler alloy and a synthetic diamond grit they these, these things were utilized to make a kind of a diamond wheel it is not real diamond wheel and but this wheel which has been shown is what we they are using the word diamond wheel and this is a cutting on uh, the, 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 the cutting face and how it cutting face has been made by using the laser welding process between the this uh, steel uh, surface and then uh, braced uh, the surface. Here also the surface the, there is a some sort of uh, uh, vacuum brazing action between the diamond grain, flare, interface carbide and steel matrix. So, again there are the four layers and we are able to see the saw shape that means uh, this is the cutting diamond uh, to cut the uh, materials and in this case we are considering the example of uh, pipe uh, to cut the cast iron pipe we required a some sort of uh, uh, the cutting saw and that is what we mentioned here the cutting saw and this case the diameter of this cutting saw what has been mentioned here this diameter is uh, something like a uh, on the 355 mm right. So, what is mentioned the filler alloy synthetic diamond grit and then uh, we arranged and then uh, we say that uh, to, to bind uh, this diamond grit. Uh, grit on the steel substrate uh, initially those process were cleaned using the ultrasonic clinic uh, and the maybe uh, what we say they are using acetone and ethanol these are the two common uh, uh, let us say uh, chemicals which has been used for the cleaning uh, purpose almost in all the cases. Now this uh, the, the how it is coming is something like uh, it has a number of uh, uh, what is a saw tooth it can be used as a kind of the blade section and then uh, it has been made by the diamond grain filler alloy and a steel matrix that has been shown on this phase right. To, to make the process or to make the this kind of uh, the, the cutting tool uh, or we will say that uh, brazing diamond cutting saw they follow the process we say the diamond brazing process and then uh, it was capped in a vacuum furnace. So, that uh, temperature can be increased for the to further which is really required for the brazing purpose and the brazing temperature was something like uh, 1026 degrees uh, centigrade and that uh, they were supposed to keep it for 15 minutes. So, whatever the process which was suggested these author have maintained continuously at that process and of course, uh, it should not the temperature uh, increase should not happen at the sudden rate uh, that is why they, they, they started uh, increase in the temperature. Uh, 10 degree per minute and then subsequently the following also the process of the cooling uh, under the uh, we say the high vacuum furnace. So, they kept uh, all the condition there should not be environment interaction perfect uh, brazing should happen they maintain the temperature increase rate whatever was suggested and then uh, they really got a uh, in the, the, this uh, blade ready after brazing. But it was for some further supposed to be uh, the welded to the main beam uh, because this will be as a cutting tool and then the main beam is a steel uh, uh, matrix. So, they use a laser welding process. So, this is a cutting as I say cutting tool and this is a kind of wheel which we were supposed to use which is a uh, cutting wheel which we are supposed to use. 
and that is what we are using overall is a diamond wheel. Now, if you if you uh, go through the scanning of uh, on the, the, this what we say that the uh, fractography at the SEM level, what we they have uh, observed scanning uh, using the uh, SEM uh, of the diamond uh, particularly they found that everything is good uh, diamond grain were fine, grain edges were fine and everything really look very uh, carefully. And another thing when the, they are embedding, when they are embedding this kind of diamond into the uh, what we say into the alloy or the filler material, they found everything the binding also coverage also everything was a perfect. So, what we say that uh, image reveal both cutting edges and surface integrity of the diamond abrasives, diamond abrasives are in excellent condition free from any visible crack or holes visible not uh, naked eyes, but it is even the through the SEM they found everything uh, in uh, the perfect. And then would say that boundary of the diamond grid is fully embedded with an active filler layer that means there is a perfect adhesion which was required between the diamond and the filler alloy. So, everything remain in a uh, proper shape then they were supposed to do a some sort of trials they were supposed to do a trials on the and the, and the of the cutting uh, pipes which is uh, um, the dimension of the, uh, the sorry the thickness equal to the 18 mm. So, cast iron pipe which was supposed to cut and then the thickness of the pipe was 18 mm. So, they started working on that this is a water cutting machine and this is the pipe which they were supposed to cut the pipe dimension actually will be very very big as such. So, that is why it is mentioned that to assess the performance of cutting cast iron pipes test was conducted using the this uh, diamond wheel and then uh, test specimen focus one thing is important on the drawing they do not want it to use any sort of a cooling agent they do not want to use any kind of the lubricant because that is a costly and then we need to process and in this uh, when uh, we have a lot of emphasis on a sustainability we say try to avoid all the uh, peripheral thing. If the lubricant which was used if you can remove it will be very good if cutting fluid which was used if you are able to remove it, it will be very good. So, from sustainability point of view the drying action should be able to really give the good results, uh, but we need to check it technically whether it is possible or not. And in this case I mentioned the iron pipe with the wall thickness of 18 mm was employed for the experiments. This is the complete process has been recorded and shown. However, they found uh, finally uh, after uh, and then the cutting uh, some section of the pipe there was a some sort of a visible cracks on the diamond and then diamond is showing some sort of a cracks or some sort of a marking on the and then the in some sort of marking or cleavage planes which indicates very clearly that brittle failure has occurred that means the cutting tool which we have made. We assume the diamond will be able to say and then the sustain very high temperature in absence of the lubricant it has not reached to that level. That means, even the diamond which is a really subjected to high temperature maybe tune of the 1000 degree which was supposed to be in the bigger diamond can sustain this kind of temperature, but it has not really sustained reason being that maybe the 18 mm thickness is a too high for this kind of uh, the, the heat rate of heat generation was very high and it has softened it and maybe the sp3 bond uh, which we see in a diamond it got converted to sp2 bond that means a softening has happened temperature has changed and then the, the, the structure has changed from sp3 to sp2 and then uh, that is why the we find uh, abrasive particle broke uh, in pieces fractured in a pieces or uh, uh, initially it was uh, in the, 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 there was a thinking then these pieces will come out of the, um, the alloy filler alloy, but that does not happen it remain as it is in uh, pieces, but and the diamond itself has changed from sp3 to sp2 bonds. And then uh, that is why we say that figure 3 a shows a diamond abrasive particle fracture profile this has been shown a fracture profile and then uh, when you do a uh, analysis of microstructure they find that sp2 bond has been there. And then uh, if you look at the uh, in large view they could figure out the brittle failure of the diamond as such. So, overall this finally experiment failed some more thinking is really required that whether we require some sort of lubricant 
we require a lesser thickness, maybe the productivity will be sacrificed to some extent, shall we give lesser speed, more time to uh, cut it and that the, these kind of experiments maybe they will be doing because this publication uh, came in 2023, I hope uh, they will continue this kind of research. So, I thank you for attending this lecture and my next lecture which is the lecture 8 will be on a surface degradation mechanism due to heat and radiation. Today we have covered something on the heat related thing, thank you. Mm -hmm.